going to do is I'm going to show the Simulink model that I'm going to use for uh, this example. So as you can see here, uh, what I have is the standard closed loop control where I have a controller uh, as a PID based on standard Simulink uh, control models. And then I have uh, the plant, it's a second order system. And again, that's implemented uh, as a second order continuous system based in Simulink. So what I can do now is I can actually run this simulation I can see the results. And there's my step response. The thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the system so that it can work correctly into national instrument systems. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the step response uh, block and just replace it by an uh, uh, input block. There we go. Oops. Um, just to note that once we compile the model, uh, there is no need to add any hardware information. So these models would run with uh, analog inputs or with CAN messages or any kind or even data from other models. But basically, we are going to just feed data into the input and output independent on the hardware that is going to be used. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to uh, actually uh, tell the compiler how to generate the code. So the first thing that we're going to do is use a fixed step solver. And I um, typically use the uh, ODE4, but it's up for, uh, so you can choose whatever you want. And then in the code generation, we have to select the right uh, TLC file. So when you install National Instruments tools, you have a number of different TLC files, uh, ones for all the embedded targets that use VxWorks as an operating system. Um, one for Windows and real-time systems based on uh, FATLAB. And then we have two for NI Linux real-time systems, one for 32 bits and one for uh, 64 bits. I plan to use this uh, first on my computer and then on a FATLAB-based real-time system. So I'm just going to select the very stand TLC file. Click OK. OK. And we are actually now going to generate the tools. So I'm going to open this window so you can see the process of generating the C code and the compilation, etc. Okay, so basically, our build process was uh, completely successful. And if we look now, so I'm just going to this window, we'll see our model. So this is the one I've been using. And then there's uh, this folder over here with the name of the model. So if we open that, we will actually find a DLL. So this is the DLL that uh, I'm going to use to uh, use this compile model into National Instruments, National Instruments real-time systems. If uh, I use a VX uh, work uh, system, the output would be a dot out a file. If uh, the uh, target uses some sort of Linux or the NI Linux real time, uh, it will use a dot SO library. Once we have our uh, library <coughs> compiled from a model, Let's see how to put that into one of the tools that National Instruments has for real time, which is called Veristand. Um, without getting into detail of where Veristand is and what Veristand does, uh, there's plenty of information in, in, the, in the web about that. What is important is to uh, explain a little bit the setup that I have right now. So I'm running uh, actually on a virtual machine. 
and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this model into Versant and I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to create a user interface. And what you're going to see is that um, basically, uh, in this case, we have, uh, let's say, two parts of Versant running. One is the engine, which is supposed to run on a real time target, although it's going to run on my virtual machine. And the other part is the user interface. So um, hopefully I'm, I'm going to uh, do it and you'll see what I mean. So let's minimize this. Uh, actually, we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to open very stand and I'm going to start a new project. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, Simulink. Oh, actually, I already have it here. A Simulink, let's call it uh, Demo2. I already have a previous one. So I'm going to create that from scratch. So you'll see how, how it works. And again, in this example, I'm just going to run the model. Uh, I'm just going to put some uh, tools to visualize that the model is actually uh, running. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open the System Explorer. And the System Explorer is where you put into very stand the information on what the system is going to do. And my System Explorer is going to be extremely simple. Actually, it's going to have just one model. So one thing to notice is that on the this uh, the controller is actually going to be my Windows operating system, and again this means that the engine is going to run on my um, on my Windows uh, machine, which again is a virtual machine. So you'll see the performance is really bad. Um, and then uh, this is where I would add different hardware configurations, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a simulation model, okay? And this is where I point to the, uh, this is where I point to the, oh, just let this run. So if you remember, this is the folder where I have my, uh, the results of the compilation of my simulic model. And this is the DLL. Again, I'm going to use, it's the same file for Windows and Firelab. So I'm going to use that one. See, okay. And I'm just going to show that I have the input and the output. And again, there's many things I can do that I'm not uh, showing in this video. I can work with parameters and signals. I can work with the execution of the models. I can change. Uh, loop rates. I mean, I can do many, many things, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to show them. So I'm just going to save that. And actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this and I'm going to create a new screen so we can actually see uh, what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, a graph. Is this Text no, uh, pull down no, uh, this. I'm going to put a chart. And in this chart, I'm going to plot the input and the output of my model. Okay. Now, to actually put some stimulus, I'm going to uh, actually, I'm going to put a numeric control. And I'm going to link it also to the input on my compile uh, simulink model. So I'm going to put there. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to deploy. So right now, <clears throat> what Peristen is doing is it's taking the information that we have from our let's deploy. Uh, it's taking the information that it has on the system uh, explorer. It's compiling that and it's deploying that to the engine, which again, once more, that engine is not uh, running in this instance right now on a real-time system. It's just running on my laptop. This is just for demo purposes. 
um, I'm going to show how to do that later, how to move that to a, a real-time uh, operating system, okay? And basically it's deploying, and I see here, so uh, it's waiting for to run, so I'm going to connect. And actually, let me make this a little bit thicker so we can see my inputs and my outputs. And now if I just, you know, I'll have the step response that I have uh, from my from simulation. Actually, if I make this F2, okay, so I could actually save the data and, and compare it with the one from the simulation, but uh, visually it's look uh, pretty much like it's the correct output. Something that I'm going to show. So right now the system is running and I just want to show the non real time option. So this is basically we're doing here like a module in the loop. And what I'm going to show right now is, okay, we have some information on the system and we can actually see what is the actual loop rate. So I'm going to put that there. And it should be around 100. And you see how it's bouncing up and down. And again, that's because the engine is not running on a real-time engine. It's running on a Windows uh, operating system, which on top of that is running on a virtual machine. So let's, uh, let me show you uh, next how to, how to change that. 